Welcome to episode 486 of Salcedo Paranormal. And tonight I'm sharing true paranormal stories from the web. As always, you can find all episodes of the show along with links to social media and other ways to contact me at the podcast page. And that is salcedoparanormal.podbean.com. That's S A L S I D O Paranormal dot podbean dot com. Always happy to hear from from you all, whether you have comments or questions or topic suggestions or stories of paranormal experiences, whether they're your own or from others that you trust. Happy to either read those or have you join me on the show to talk about them. Thank you all for listening, whether you listen to these streams on Discord or on the podcast or YouTube feeds or on the Trouble Minds Radio Network, KUAP Digital Broadcasting. There you can hear two, two replays of the show, uh, different episodes every night at 6 p.m. Pacific, 9 p.m. Eastern, right before Trouble Minds Radio comes on. As always, I want to thank Michael Strange, host of Trouble Minds Radio, as well as Liam Martin, host of the Exile Minds podcast, for producing the shows and putting them up on the station. If you'd like to support the show, there are some different ways to do that. You can always share the show with others. And rate and review the podcast, uh, the show on your podcast platform of choice. I've also written some paranormal fiction and nonfiction books you can check out on Amazon. Also, I have a Patreon page where I will re- be releasing episodes whenever I can. I have one up there so far, and those are available to all membership tier levels there uh, as another way to uh, support the show and get extra content here and there. Also, if you'd like to make just a one-time donation, uh, you're welcome to to do that through PayPal or Venmo. Help is never expected, but always appreciated as there are expenses in making this show. From equipment to uh, research materials to travel expenses. Uh, In particular, this year, I'm heading to the Mid-Michigan Paracon, November 4th and 5th, just about a month away now. That's a Saturday and Sunday. And uh, that's in Mount Pleasant, Michigan, at the Soaring Eagle Casino and Resort. So I'll be making recordings, audio recordings of myself and anyone else who wants to join me, talking about the paranormal and uh, experiences and all those things. And then uh, bringing those recordings back home and sharing them on future shows. So I think that covers everything. I think I can get on to the stories now. And uh, we'll go from there. And. Uh, yeah, so just uh, real quick, like I said in the, the that part there, um, the show is has been amazing to do, and I will, I don't ever want to stop. But uh, any help uh, in terms of fu- um, helping to fund it or to contribute to it, uh, donate to it will be greatly appreciated. Um, but uh, it's never expected, and of course you can always help in other ways as well, as I described at the beginning of the show. But um, as we get closer to going to this uh, Paracon, any help, any um, donations would definitely go straight toward those expenses uh, as of as of now, because uh, that's where my focus is at the moment. So, getting to the stories here. This first one says, uh, "I see here. Okay, this first one says I was always skeptical about ghosts and the paranormal." But I do live in an an area with a freeway that is known to have a history of terrible accidents. I usually avoid driving on this road at night, but I had no choice this time. It was around 10.30 p.m. There is one curve in particular where I always slow down to 20 miles per hour to avoid having my own accident. Excuse me. At one point, I saw a cross and a bend where a previous accident had happened. Near the cross was a huge, strangely enlarged motorcycle with no headlights and an indistinct rider. I felt uneasy but continued driving home. I was worried that the motorcycle might follow me. As I kept my eye on it, I started to suspect it might be 
paranormal due to the size and the fluidity of the rider. Once I got home, I did a search on that bend in the road. It turns out that the cross was there for someone who had passed in the area, and they had been riding a motorcycle. So that's where that story ends. And I don't always like sharing stories about sort of these darker places, but I think it's important to note that and maybe to uh, to put it out there that maybe these roads should be, um, there should be work done in these areas to sort of decrease the number of accidents and, and other events that happen in these roads that have such a, such a negative effect on the people in the area and then the just the uh, environment around it too, I'm guessing. And um, <clears throat> I've heard of places like this, I, I believe, over the years all around the country. It seems like they're, they're just here and there, the, no matter what state you, you're in. Um, I'm guessing almost anyone can think of a road that's is similar. And um, so, yeah, it's... And I wouldn't doubt that there, that there could be an apparition there that this person saw. Of um, it sounds almost like a shadow motorcycle and figure. So really odd there. It's almost like a shadow figure version of like um, um, just a a rider and and their vehicle. So I was gonna say something else, make a reference, but uh, that's uh might be uh copyrighted co copyright material there. So I'm gonna stay away from that. But um, so yeah, I don't know what that was. But other than it did, did seem uh, didn't seem normal, and uh, I always go with trust what you feel when you're in it, having a having a paranormal experience, and um, at least the person didn't feel threatened, even though they did feel uneasy. I don't really blame them for that. So, moving on to the next story here. Let's see here. This one says. Uh, okay, even though I do believe in the paranormal, I also think it is important to be skeptical as well. In 2019, my mom and I stayed at a hotel in San Antonio, Texas. We had been there before because we liked the hotel and one of their rooms in particular. We took the elevator from the ground floor. A man, um, excuse me, I lost my spot. A man entered the elevator on the second floor, immediately creating an eerie atmosphere. This man greeted us in a formal fashion and wore late 1800s-style clothing that appeared to be authentic, as in it was not a costume as far as we could tell. The elevator opened on the next floor and the man bid us goodbye in the same manner. My mom and I were shaken by the experience and couldn't explain the strange feeling that enveloped us while the man was near us. His gaze never seemed to focus on us, and he appeared disconnected from reality. The encounter left an indescribably eerie, and unsettling feeling. Has anyone else had a similar experience? And that's where that story ends. <coughs> Excuse me. Um, that is amazing. I, I, If it wasn't for the feelings that they got, that the writer and their mom got, I would almost wonder. You could almost maybe, talking about skeptical, being skeptical, you could almost think, well, it must have just been someone there for some kind of event uh, or maybe just sort of enjoying freaking people out. I guess I can see that as well. But um, with the feeling that they got from the, the person there, I don't know what to make of that unless it was something paranormal. And if it was, then was he from another time? Uh, depending on how old the hotel was, would... um. Is it possible he did come from another time? 
And was he just from another time? Was there some kind of a time anomaly? Or was he a spirit of some kind that was still able to look physical? And you do hear that about some apparitions that later, maybe it does seem like they're spirits, and yet they appear solid. So I don't think we can rule that out. The way, though, that he seemed to not be looking at the the, the writer and their mother on, on the elevator, I wonder what that means, if that does mean he was sort of a spirit. I don't know. I can't really go any direction with that for sure. It seems like even if it was a person from another time, maybe I would be curious. Of course, it's impossible, but if we could somehow talk to that person, <laughs> That guy, was he? did he exist in his own time? And does he have his own story about, wow, there were these two people on this elevator, and they were in really weird clothes that I've never seen before. And they were, they looked almost like ghosts. Maybe they were translucent, whatever. And I didn't like looking at them, so I just did not look at them at all for the entire ride. I would wonder if there was a story about that somewhere that never got, never was shared with anyone. So, impossible to know, but it's always fun to think about that, I think, in a way. Just the, uh, sort of the the experience from the point of view of whoever else was there that seemed paranormal, that seemed not like a regular person to the people that are there existing at that time that um to to call them normal people i don't know about that but people in the current time period that we're in right now or that they were in when they when basically that they're writing about in their story anyway i feel like i'm confusing even myself on that one so i think i'm gonna stop with that but hopefully you all get the idea so moving on to the next story This one, let me find it. Lost my spot. Okay. Uh, this one says, I have felt a cat walking on my bed since I was around 15 years old. I have also heard faint purring sounds when it happens. Even though I have a living cat now, it's not allowed in my room at night, and the door is always closed. The sensation of four feet or paws walking around the bed is most noticeable when I sleep on my side. The experience stopped and I moved away to a different place. But it has returned since I've moved back home. I think that one of my two deceased cats may be the one behind these visits. And that's where that story ends. And that is amazing to me, especially if those two cats that they mentioned there passed away on that property. It wouldn't surprise me at all if one of them, or even both of them at different times, but either way, one of them, at the very least, did like to visit the writer there when they were there at that house, that location, and sort of just say hello in a way when, whenever possible. I wonder um, about the size of the bed, if that's why uh, it happened more when, when the, the writer was laying on their side, if it was more of a, um, because there was more room, that left more room on the bed for basically this ghost cat to walk around on. Um, but um, I like how they sort of, they describe the experience and then, uh, end with the possible identity of the cat there in question. And um, so, I, yeah, I like that story a lot in a way. I mean, it's uh, I'll, obviously it's always sad whenever a, pa a pet passes. But, um, and, but also, I mean, this is, it sounds like it's not a negative experience in any way. So what better thing to have it, it, than something like that where you almost feel like you can sense one of your your former pets, at least uh, possibly. At least you don't get any kind of negative sense. So, And I, I've heard that over the years in so many stories. 
people will say, I've heard these noises or felt these things that that remind me of, of my one of my previous pets and uh, after they passed. And it just happens over and over again. So many stories, like I said. So that wouldn't surprise me at all if that was the case. But also, funny enough, I think we should take into we should consider that it could be just a random cat that has somehow maybe felt drawn to the writer. And again, not in a negative way, but just maybe knowing that the writer is uh, open to to being near or with cats, sort of compatible with cats. Because that makes me think of my own experience that I've had um, with the ghost cat that stops right here once in a while. Again, I've never felt any negative uh, intentions or energy coming from it whenever it's been by here. And But I have no idea who it is. I never got a feeling of it being a previous cat from all the years that my family really multiple family parts of the family and I have had cats. I haven't felt any kind of uh, recognition of it being anyone that I used to have or used to um, know, used to know. So either way, I'm glad that it's not a negative experience. That's the main thing I think. But, um, and also it could be that the writer maybe, um, they, maybe they do sense, if, even if they didn't say exactly in that um, that piece there, if they know, if they can feel like it is one of their cats, then I'm not saying it can be or that they're wrong. It's just um, if they don't have that sort of clear identification, that sense from it, then it could be, it could be one of their previous cats and it could also just be, I think, a random one as well. So... Moving on to the next story here. <clears throat> this one says, and now, of course, this one right here, I want to, um, and I, I knew there was a reason I wanted to stop here at this one, the beginning of this one. Um, this is about an abandoned a location, and of course, now it's not there anymore. But just always keep in mind that um, I, don't, I don't ever recommend anyone checking out abandoned locations. Um, a lot of times they're they're abandoned and they're, no one's supposed to be there for reasons, for safety reasons, for, um, really, that's the main one right there. And then, of course, secondarily, uh, legal reasons, which can cost a lot of money for everyone involved. So just a little heads up there. Um, I always look into these stories because if it's something that already happened, there's not much I can do about that. But, so i just like to recommend don't, uh, I don't ever recommend doing it like this, but uh, I still like to talk, talk about the experiences. So this one says, there is an abandoned, an abandoned orphanage in the city where I am going to college. Believed to be haunted due to its appearance. The people who ran the orphanage were known for being very strict. There is a local story, and I'm guessing this is a legend, about a child who passed due to pneumonia after disobeying orders from the staff and how the staff displayed this child's body in the lobby as an example. But I don't know if that is true. And I'll just say, hopefully not. And since they, they say it's a story there, I'm going to go with that. Hopefully that's just a story or a legend. Could even be, well, as we see here, could even be one that was made up to go with the activity in the location. And sorry, I'm doing so much in here that in this article, sort of cutting in, but I think it's important in some cases. Anyway, story says, but people in this area believe that the child's sp spirit haunts the building as a blue green, uh, blue uh, blue green or blue slash green orb, often seen in the basement. Recently, four of my friends and I decided to explore the orphanage. That's my, why I wanted to give that little um, bit at the beginning there. We had to enter through the second floor 
due to the doors and windows being boarded up on the ground floor. At first, nothing happened, but we continued exploring. I saw a bluish-green orb in a stairwell, which quickly darted away. When I asked if anyone else had seen it, none of my friends had. Despite this strange uh, sighting, I continued down the hallway. Then I heard children whispering excuse me, from a classroom at the end of the hallway. One friend decided it was time to leave, and we all exited, exited the building. All five of us heard the whispering, confirming the experience. Sometime after this happened, the orphanage was turned into an apartment complex. And that's where that story ends. So, again, um, please don't ever go into those kinds of uh, places just because of safety and legal reasons. But um, also in this case, I don't quite feel so bad about sharing that story since you can't really go in there anymore because it's apartment buildings now. Um, but uh, I really wonder in that case, like I said, I think in some cases stories can be made up to or are tied to activity, paranormal activity insights um, by for any number of reasons. And I'm wondering if that was the case with that story uh, about the the child, but um, definitely seems like they saw the writer saw something the blue green bluish green orb, and then they all heard whispers. So, of course, with um, cases like that, I always wonder when a building starts off as one thing and then is turned into something else later on, like like an apartment building. Uh, I would I'd be curious to know what kind of activity the people there experience and sort of what the um what the turn what what the rate of of uh, departures and, and entrances what basically how many how often people move in and out of there I'd be curious to know all those things um, if it was just the because of the the past there then maybe the place being changed might. I don't know, it might it could go either way. It could either calm things down when it, when it's being used for something maybe good, but it could also when it, during the renovation process and changing things that can um that can lead to more activity. So it's hard to know for sure. But um so yeah, I don't know what's what's going on there, but uh really um really interesting there how that worked. And uh I wonder again if um if there's still activity there. Let's see here. I'm seeing something here, but I'm not sure if hopefully this recording made it made it through, but if not, I guess I'll do it over again. <laughs> but um anyway, so uh orbs, they seem to pop up every so often in stories, just at random places. Inside buildings, outside of buildings, you never know. But uh, I think that's gonna be it for tonight. Thank you all for listening. Please um, check out the links to anyone else's pages that I have in the each episode description. All friends of the show, and uh, go from there. So, thank you all for being here, and I will talk to you on the next episode of Salcedo Paranormal. Take care.